I'm so good. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. Hey. Yeah. Who's first? So, did you read? Did you read the comics or anything before starting? Oh yeah. I'm so excited to meet Peter Hogan. I love the comic book. Um, no, to be fair, I've never read a comic book before, so that was my any? first. Oh. Any. I had not read any graphic novels, comic book series of any kind. Um, I, the, the closest I've ever gotten would be Miyazaki, like watching films, Spirited Away is one of my favorite films. Um, but yeah, right. But uh, as far as reading it, I just never like, it's not, I never thought to like, I don't know, pick one up. So this was a really great like excuse to try something out for the first time, and I'm, I'm so glad that I did, because it's really well written and really well uh, created. The art is so stunning in this comic book, and I also just love how the emotion kind of pops out of the page, the intent. I think that just kind of showcases a really great writer, and I think that Chris was able to take that and uh, run with it when he wrote his own script. So it was really cool reading. What was it that you liked about the script when you saw this one? So I read it, and my first instinct was, this feels like Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> That's my favorite show. Starbuck is my girl. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, is this my opportunity to be kind of Starbuck? -y? You know, like, it's not in space, it's not, it's very different, but when you think about story-wise, how you could... If, if the story's good enough, you can put any genre on it. It just so happens there's an alien in this town, but it really just comes down to like this humanity, these people, this small town kind of drama, murder mystery that's happening, and this uh, relatability to just what it is to be human, or how awkward it can be. Um, that part of the storytelling is what really fueled me. And so I thought, okay, this could be really something quite extraordinary. And I feel like it's, I, I, I've loved sci-fi for a long time. They, I got my start on sci-fi. My indie films that I was in the very beginning of my career aired on sci-fi. So it's always been like a really special network for me. So to have this happen full circle is amazing. Um, but I'm also just excited to see the fans as they reacted today, I feel like they're gonna have that same reaction when the whole show comes out. And I think it's gonna elevate um, sci-fi to a whole new level. That's how strong I feel about the story. What did you prepare for the casting? Because everybody told us here the story. How did they Prepared. prepare and what did they show to the, to the producers? My boyfriend, um, TJ Patterson, is an incredible man as well as coach, and so he and I, the night before, really talked about um, the spirituality of Asta and uh, <laughs> what it means for her to be a woman trying to get her power back. And um, we just really did a lot of movement uh, and really just tried to figure out like what was going on on the deep layer so that when she is so guarded in front of people, there's still something behind her eyes constantly trying to figure out like what's going on. And she's not very trusting of many people and there's got to be a lot of layers of mistrust in order to get that. But you can't show all your cards at once and so she's got to come in and she's got to act like she owns the room even if she feels insecure you know so that was something we worked on um, before the audition and then just going in the audition was really familiar and really fun and I walked out not really remembering what I did which I think shows how close her and I really are to each other yeah. talking about your character spirituality how do you feel representing a Native American character I'm so honored um, I my favorite thing about Asta is that she's a mix, mm -hmm. and so am I, and it's the first time I've gotten a chance to play a role where I can really truly be all that I am, um, because I, I do have Native heritage, but I'm not a citizen, and so I think it's really important, especially now in this day and age, with all the conversations we're having about ethnicity, to be upfront and forward about who you really are, and the fact that I can, you know, I, Chris and I really talked about this for a long time, we wanted to be respectful to the Native American community to showcase um, what is true and beautiful and right about um, their community, but also be honest about who I am, and that I'm a mix, and I can't check just one box, and 
neither can Asta, and that's what makes us feel like an outsider. You know, when I go to vote, I check the other box. I don't know where I fit in, but I think that there's a lot of people that feel that way. You know, I think it's really easy to check a box, but what happens to those of us who don't have a box to check? And what does that mean for us, and where do we fit in? Um, I think that's really relatable, and so I think, you know, we decided that that was what was best, was to really just go with my mixed heritage, and not, she's not really sure who she is, or what that means. You know, she's raised by the Native American community, but she's still not sure what that means for her, you know? So I'm, I'm just honored that I get to um, represent just who I am, you know, and that the writers uh, were willing to work with me on that, because I think it's important. I think piggybacking off of that question, uh, with, with genre fiction especially, with such a, a demand on fans for representation, to a need for that, like, for more people to feel like they can find that box for themselves yeah. in media, how do you feel your role services these people in particular? Like, like, how do you feel like this is going to affect people who are growing up who don't know where they feel? Do you feel like this could help them find a voice themselves? Yeah, I, I would like to think so. I mean, I think the reason that I got into acting in the first place was because I wanted... I remember being on the couch when I was young, watching something, seeing a woman that looks like me, and feeling like I finally felt understood. You know, um, the first character was Sarah from Labyrinth. Hello. <laughs> um, her name and then her hair and then, you know, I was young and I was like, yeah, David Bowie. Anyway, um, I personally hope and I think that by being relatable and making sure that, you know, changing her heritage to being more like mine is going to show people that it's, it's good for you to stand up for who you are, don't be ashamed of that, and that if you don't know where you fit in, that maybe that's okay too. And I'm really hoping, and I think we will, have some of these conversations in some of the episodes and show that that um, not having a box to check is not the end of the world, that we all are a mix of something, and that's what makes us great. So there's a lot of character development just in the pilot. Yes! <laughs> I know, they, they fit a lot in. Yeah, that's yeah. what. Um, but I'm assuming there's a, still a lot, lot more to go on. So how far in do you know the character? Okay, so I know that she's guarded. I know that she's coming back to her town for the first time. I know she's got a complicated relationship with her father. Um, I don't know that he's an alien. I don't know if she's going to find out. Um, I don't know anything other than... Sam died, someone killed him, there's a weird guy here, and I'm not sure who I am or what I want to do with my life. And so, I'm not really as Asta right now in the episodes that I've been able to read. Chris does a really great job of just kind of diving in to just a couple days in the life of people as they're trying to figure their place out. And as you are learning things, so are we. And I think that's what keeps it working. So it's very just open, and she's just, you know, a woman that you're meeting, <laughs> trying to figure her shit out, <laughs> you know? Yeah. We've got about one more minute. Okay. So you've got about one more minute. Uh, right. uh, so, once upon a time. Um, so how did you approach this differently than you see your regular role? Um, that's a great question. I... I treat this a lot more like theater, actually. When you do theater, you get a lot more time to work on a role, um, so you have more time to really approach the arc, versus recurring roles or guest stars are just a couple of days, and you really don't have that long to dive in. You don't even have that much backstory. So the preparation for this is a very um, different and more complex preparation that I think equates back to my theater days when I got to really dive in for three months to a character you know now it's going to be four months and now it's been already a year and a half and I've had her like living in me ever since then so I'm excited to see like how she grows and what happens a lot, everyone else so far has talked about how the adaptation process is so, you take it to the movies with the comics, you ever think about like, how you approach that? Do you approach the comics first as like a source of inspiration? Do you rely more purely on the scripts? Like, um, I talk very, very closely with Chris, who's the writer. 
um, we both are inspired by the comic book, um, but he's told me from the beginning that he's only going to be, you know, kind of pulling and picking what works for the script from the comic book. Um, so I personally, whenever I have a question or he has a question, we have a really great rapport and dialogue about talking about it and figuring it out together, which is really a kind of beautiful thing. You, you don't always get that in a showrunner. Um, he's very, very adamant about making sure that everybody feels good about what they're doing with their own intentions. Big to small roles, he's like, you have a purpose and you have a reason for being here. And I think that we adapt it based on what's right for us as people and what's right for this time in our lives and I think we're being really sensitive to being authentic and organic in that way. Yeah. How um, your character obviously has like this really, this really dark past and stuff, how are you balancing that with all the comedy or do, are we going to get to see her be funny at all? You know, I think that they like to, you know, um, they're, they're not calling it a drama or a comedy. In this little background, I think that it's really um, great to see how comedy does come from tragedy. And a really great example is Alice, who's in the bar, her best friend. Um, she helps her laugh and keeps her light, and so does Harry now too. I think you're going to see her lighten up as time goes on, but she's just, you're meeting her at a, at a dark time, and I think we're doing a good job of showing that you still have to laugh through the tears, but there still has to be tears, and you still have to figure out your way through that as well, so I think that's what Chris is doing a great job of, is um, writing something relatable where I think Alice and I especially are going to have a lot more moments where we're laughing and crying at the same time, you know? Yep. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.